highways. Loud, noisy, dirty. Waiting, stress, anxiety. Those are just a few things that come to our mind when we think of highways. Sure. They represent a great and fast transportation system from point A to point B. But besides that it represents a big environmental threat, leaving a great carbon footprint that can be utilized for useful things. Have you ever heard of mycorrhizal fungi? Few have. It's a symbiotic relationship of fungi and vascular plant roots. It's not that rare either. More that 80% of all plants on planet Earth have this relationship. Now you are probably wondering where is the connection between fungi and highways. It is well known that cars from highways emit high concentrations of carbon and pollutants into the atmosphere, but some of it also ends up in soil and some plants can use it for the growth. This is how plants help in mitigation of global warming. The arbuscular mycorrhizal symbiosis sequester carbon in soil by transferring photosynthates from host plants to the fungal intraradical and extraradical hyphae. The reason why mycorrhizal fungi are able to store great amounts of carbon is because hyphae cell walls consist of recalcitrant compounds, such as chitin, that contribute to a slow turnover of soil organic C. The soil organic sea pool is an important component of terrestrial ecosystems and is a crucial regulator of sea fluxes between the biosphere and the atmosphere. So basically, what we are aiming for is a self-sufficient system consisting of a tree plant, Populus ex canadensis, and white clover trifolium repens, with mycorrhizal fungi that will grow by itself, naturally. The higher plants will provide extra sugars to the fungi, in exchange, fungi will increase the take-up of nutrients nitrogen and phosphorus by, by expanding the root system. It's a win-win situation ideally. Plants will be planted along the highway mainland Croatia. A3 highway and after a certain period of time. The mycorrhizal fungi and the hyphae will be extracted from the soil using a well-established filter method, followed by staining in either automated or manual quantification methods. Since there is limited information for the exact process of the extraction of carbohydrates from hyphae, our guess is that the fungal biomass after filtration must undergo lyophilization. The ready product would be in a powder-like state and could be manipulated into desired forms. So, what to do with all that carbohydrates from hyphae? There are various possibilities. The biggest portion of these carbohydrates will presumably be glucose and sucrose which are actually the most important CO2 producers of all sugars. Therefore, all this sugar can be used in producing CO2 where ethanol 2 is produced. Depending on how it's stored, yielded CO2 could be used, for example, for carrier gas in bars and restaurants for draft beer. That's good news. More beer, or in greenhouses. Studies have shown that higher concentrations of carbon dioxide affect crops in two important ways. They boost crop yields by increasing the rate of photosynthesis, which spurs growth and they reduce the amount of water crops lose through transpiration. Another product of yeast fermentation. Ethanol is one of the most commonly used biofuels in transportation sector to reduce greenhouse gases. Also, when dried, mycelium can form an incredibly strong material that is not only water resistant, but also fire and mold resistant. Not only is it sturdy, resilient and bulletproof, but it can withstand extreme temperatures, and when its lifetime of use is over, the material can be easily composted. Frankly, anything that comes to your mind can be done. The above ground biomass would be used for making park benches, particularly in Zadar on Moorage, the city defense walls. The wood show would be sliced into thin strips, then woven together to create individual molds. Within these molds we need to add the mushrooms, which were grown using this very wood as food. 
The mushroom then grows around the mold and binds the wood together, resulting in a substance that resembles and acts like leather on lightweight, durable and completely compostable furniture. The white clover can be used in green fertilization. On the culinary side, the leaves may may be used as salad and white clover seeds may be parched and grounded to be used as desired. Flowers and leaves can be used for tea that has healing properties. This is still the working idea of this project on sequestration of carbon dioxide with mycorrhizal fungi. Many factors play a great role in the whole process. Since we are merely students with limited knowledge, mainly focused on agricultural fields, more expertise is needed to evaluate these ideas.